Button is essential element for almost any user interface because it allows users to take action. In this video, I will review seven basic rules that you need to remember to create an effective button. First rule is make buttons look like buttons. When users see a screen, they need to know instantly what is clickable and what's not. But how do users understand whether a certain element is interactive or not? They rely on their past experience. They analyze visual attributes of an object to clarify the meaning. The sooner the user understands what they can do on a screen, the sooner they can take, a, can take actions. That's why it's so important to use appropriate visual indicators such as size, shape, color, shadow to make the element look like a button. Border is the first visual attribute in our list. Border reinforces the feeling of a traditional button and creates an eye-catching target for the user. Without a border, the UI element looks more like a link rather than a button. Links and buttons might sound like the same thing, but they are not. They serve different functional purposes. Links are used for navigation, while buttons are used for actions. That's why it's always better to use a visible border. Shape is another visual attribute in our list. Unconventional shapes like stars, triangles, or blobs can be very confusing to users. The shapes might look great, but they are not really typical. So when users see such shapes, they might think that they are looking at decorative element. A rectangular object with a label inside is what we call a traditional button. This object can be filled with a solid color or be for hollow, can be with rounded or square corners. A circle with an icon is another popular shape for the traditional button. Interesting fact, round shape is more pleasing for the human eye. We naturally tend to avoid sharp objects, and some of us even have a fear of sharp things such as pencils, and needles and knives. Should I design field or hollow button? Well, hollow buttons, also known as ghost buttons, became trendy in recent years. But when it comes to user experience, it's important to remember that hollow buttons are less effective for capturing user attention, since they have less visual weight. Your decision to use a particular style should be based on the level of the emphasis you want to give to your buttons. Generally, Field buttons work best for the primary call to action, while hollow work best for the secondary action. If you need to place two call to action buttons side by side, you can use a pair of field and hollow button. In this case, field buttons should be for the primary call to action, while the hollow button for the secondary action. This high emphasis button commands the most attention, while the ghost button will be used as a valuable alternative. Shadows. Along with the shape, shadows is another popular visual attribute. Generally, shadows will help you to increase the visual prominence of a button and put more emphasis on it. There are two things you should remember about shadows. First, if you choose to use a shadow, don't make it too strong because it will make your UI look dirty. It's better to rely on subtle shadows. And to create a nice subtle shadow, you can use a tint of the button primary color. Second, a decision whether you want to use a shadow for the buttons should be based on the style of your user interface. For example, all, when all elements of your page are flat, the button with a shadow would look odd. So you always need to achieve a visual consistency in your design, meaning you need to follow the majority. Visual consistency is the key to create good user experience. Not only the visual attributes of the button itself are important, the amount of the white space near the button makes it easier or harder for the user to understand whether it's in an interactive element or not. For example, when a user sees a page like this, they can tell whether it's a box or a button. On this screen, in comparison, button is more distinguishable. We also should not forget about different button states. 
Users should understand the button's current state just by looking at it. For example, the disabled state should have different visual style than an active state. The color and opacity can be used to communicate the state. For example, for disabled button state, you can use 40% hex of the color of the enabled state. Rule number two, put buttons where users expect to find them. Do not make users hunt for buttons. If users can find a button, they won't know that a certain action exists. The position of a button is important. We need to create a layout that makes it easier for users to scan them with, with their eyes. Buttons should be located in places where users can easily find them or expect to see. Conventional placements for buttons improve discoverability. When users interact with the standard layouts, they will easily understand the purpose of each element, even if a button won't have a strong visual attributes. It's also important to test your design for discoverability. When users interact with the product for the first time, you should watch whether it's easy or hard for them to spot an appropriate action. You can use tools like a heat map that shows areas where users look while they navigate the page. Hot areas are areas that the user looks most often. Rule number three, label button with what they do. Labels have a direct impact on button performance and conversion rate. It's better to avoid generic labels because buttons with generic labels don't say much to users. Generic labels can be a huge problem in scenarios where users have to take important action. Let me give you an example. Imagine that you accidentally triggered a deleted operation, and now you see the following error message. It's not clear what does OK and Cancel represent in this dialogue. Many people, when they see a dialogue like that, cannot understand what happens when they click on an OK button. That is why it's important to write a button label that clearly explains what, will, what, do, what it does. Instead of using OK label, it's better to use Delete. Also, if a delete is a potentially dangerous operation, you can use a red color to state this fact. Color reinforces the nature of this dangerous operation. Good labels are actionable. They prompt the user to complete a certain action by saying what will happen when the user click, tap on a button. Use verbs like send, get, apply to that to clearly describe the operation. If you want to create usable product, you want to make all text elements readable, including labels. Ensure that the color label has proper color contrast and avoid handwritten fonts because they make it difficult for users to recognize words. Try to use a typeface that work well in multiple sizes and weights. It will help you to maintain readability in every screen size and resolution. Most of the time, it's better to stick to simple sans serif fonts such as Open Sans, Helvetica or Roboto. Label alignment is a relatively simple thing, yet it can be, have a tremendous impact on how a UI feels. Poor label alignment makes UI look really bad and creates negative impression on your visitors. That's why it's important to double check that the labels in your buttons are both vertically and horizontally aligned. Always try to make labels concise. Label text is not a sentence, it's one or two words. Can I replace a label with an icon? Yes, but only if you are absolutely sure that your target audience understands the meaning of the icon you choose to use. There are a few icons that have a universal meaning, such as home, print or shopping cart. For other icons, you need to ensure that your users can decode the meaning of it on that icon. If you want to play safe, you can use an icon along with the text to communicate the meaning. 
the icon will naturally call attention to a button object, while the text label will clarify the meaning of the button. Can I use all caps labels? It's possible to use all caps labels because all caps naturally demands more attention from the users. And it's possible to use all caps for the button labels when you want users to avoid making mistakes while performing a particular action. For example, deleting an important file. Rule number four, properly size your buttons. When it comes to buttons, size matter. The size of a button should reflect the priority of the, this element on the screen. Large button means more important action. See how Netflix makes the most important button on this screen get started, look like it's the most important one. It has increased size, by making a button bigger, you make it look more important for users. And use contrast color to capture user attention. These buttons dominate the focus on this page. You also need to choose the size of a button container in accordance to the size of your label. If you make the container too tight, the label won't have enough breathing room. This creates a really bad impression on your users. You need to add at least an empty space equal to the size of two or three chairs to the left and to the right. Of course, you can add more empty space if you like. Design touch-friendly buttons. Small buttons is a common problem in mobile apps. When users interact with the small buttons, they have high chance of mistyping, meaning they might accidentally choose incorrect action. If you follow a mobile-first design approach, meaning you design for mobile device first, you should find an optimal button size and then scale it up for the desktop. MIT Touch Lab study found that the average for finger pads are between 10 to 14 millimeters and fingertips are 8 to 10 millimeters. This makes 10 to 10 millimeter an ideal touch target size. To give you more specific details, I will rely to material design recommendations. They say that making touch target at least 48 by 48 dp separated by 8 dp of a space or more uh, will ensure the balanced information density and usability. A touch target of 48 by 48 dp results in a physical size of about 9 mm regardless of the screen size. Rule number six, mind the order of your buttons. User interface is like a conversation with your user. The order for buttons should reflect the nature of a conversation between the user and the system. For every screen you design, you need to ask yourself, what order user expect to have on this screen and design accordingly. For example, for pages with pagination, it's logical that the button that moves the user forward should be on the right, the button called next, while the button which moves the user backwards should be on the left, previous. Rule number seven, provide visual or audio feedback on the interaction. When users click or tap on a the button, they expect that the user interface will respond with appropriate feedback. Based on the type of operation, it might be either visual or audio feedback. When the users don't have any feedback, they might consider that the system didn't receive their command in the first place and will repeat the action. Such behavior will often cause multiple unnecessary taps or clicks. Let's start with the desktop design first. On a desktop, we should use on hover mouse effect for buttons. On hover effect, reassures the desktop user that the particular element is interactive. Hover effect doesn't have to be fancy. It can be a subtle change of a color on hover, just like in this example. Hover state is valuable in the desktop, but it doesn't make much sense on mobile, because unlike desktop mouse, our fingers cannot hover. For all types of mediums, it's essential to add visual animation and an interaction. Visual feedback acts as acknowledgement. It reassures users that the system received the our command and 
we can use some visual attributes such as shadows to reinforce the visual feedback. For example, it's possible to change the DZ depth to imitate the sense of a movement of the button on the top. This nice example created by Vadim Gromov shows how user interface created in Material Design provides visual feedback on a button press. For some operations, such as downloading, it's worth not only acknowledging the user input, but also show the current state of the progress. This nice example created by Colin Garvin shows how a button translates into the progress indicator to demonstrate the current state of an operation. The design of a button is equally important as its functionality. Despite the fact that buttons are a very basic element of interactive design, it's worth putting a lot of attention in making them as good as possible. If you like this content, please click this button. Thank you.